connect on the phone line with the Western and Western North Regional uh, Coordinator for the National Ambulance Service, Dr. Teria Siame. Doc, thank you very much for your time. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing very well. Thank you so much. I, I can imagine the number of phone calls you are getting already regarding uh, the unfortunate incident that happened where a man is said to have lost his wife because some of your staff had demanded for 600 Ghana cities to fuel an ambulance. What, what has yeah. been the situation thus far? Yeah, thank you so much. So, um, yes, I've received more than 10 calls this morning from all over the country. Mm. So, um, we on the 4th of January, this year, uh, we had an emergency call from Holy Town Hospital mm. that uh, we have to send a patient around 340, so send a patient, 31 year old of this in our tree. Mm. What happened? Elective surgery, elective uh, surgery, and developed some complications and pneumonia mm. um, to Kolibu Teacher Hospital. And this call went through our control room. And normally, when the call goes through the control room, they would ask questions and then they will plan the, 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 the journey. And so around that time we 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 our fuel was for us was adequate for us to work within the the metropolis. Mm. And so we told them that for that distance and the traffic and all the ramps we have to go very slow and all that we need some fuel support. So they agreed. The hospital, that the Holy Child Hospital, she agreed that they would support her. So we quickly moved to the hospital, um, then we took the patient. So they told us, they told us that we have to pick the husband mm. at uh, Atokwa's Shaman. It was it's on the way when you are from Shaman, mm. as you are going towards Accra. So we agreed to do that. And then they said he is supposed to give us the money for the fuel. Mm. And we said, okay, no problem. So we went there. Unfortunately, when we got there, he himself is not even aware. He was like, ah, but what has happened to the wife? Ah, how come suddenly? Mm. You know, he didn't know what has happened. Mm. And that he was not even prepared. So he had to, we told him about the money to his said, oh, he has no money, but I only have 50 Ghana. So we said, okay, no problem. So he gave us the 50 Ghana, we bought the fuel. Mm. And then, when we set up, we set off. Then he, he called again that uh, we have to come back and pick the DOD who was delivered to the Caesarean section. Mm -hmm. So when we went there, there was this thing between them deciding whether really the child should go or not. You know, it took us a bit of time. Mm -hmm. So eventually, they decided that we shouldn't take the baby. So. We, they gave us the money to for the fuel, and then we set off. So when we were going, when we got to um, Elmina, so yes, the woman condition started deteriorating. Mm. So we then decide control the call control, and then control decide that then they should via their course, direct their course to Kiko City Hospital. Okay. Um, so the the woman can be helped. But they got to Cape Coast, she was alive, but within 10 minutes, uh, we, we lost uh, uh, a bit in our would, would you say, yeah, Doc, Dr. Siame, would you say that the delay in conveying this now deceased, a sick person at the time, to the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, the, all the delays, whether to pick the day born, a day old child, whether to pick the husband, the conversations about fuel, could have caused a death? Uh, you know, for a doctor, if you are uh, referring a patient, you need to, one, do an assessment of the patient situation. Mm. And then know, take into consideration the distance, the facility, the equipment, the resources they have. And then, uh, two, you should know and understand the Ghana National Referral Policy and Guideline. Mm. These are the two major things you should know. Well, th so, let's, so, let's say, so let's say the doctor knew this. I'm asking, if, let's assume... Uh, so I'm saying that mm. if this were taken into consideration, then the best place to send this patient uh, 
should have been a film contact regional hospital, which is a referral center where mm. I work there. Mm. I'm the head of the Department of Surgery. Okay. And I work there. And we have everything. We have the human resource. We have even uh, a consultant uh, obstetrician gynecologist. And then we also have uh, specialist obstetrician gynecologist. Mm. We have a senior specialist. We have the facilities. So I don't really understand why, uh, instead of covering a distance of about just five minutes, mm. we have to take this woman. And even the husband, even also was wondering why the case. So, so Doc, if I hear you right, uh, Dr. Siame, you are suggesting that the doctor at the Holy Family uh, Clinic in Fijai got it wrong in the referral. Is that correct? Uh, yes, you got it wrong because the patient has been sent to Shankwanda. What is the standard operating procedure for the ambulance service? If I call 112 right now that I want an ambulance, mm. what, what yeah, is the, so sta go, what's the standard operating the procedure? control room. Mm. Mm. And then control room will ask a few questions. And then control room will then, uh, uh, how do you call it, call the facility. Mm. And then the, um, we move to where you are. And then we convey you safely to where we have to send you. In, in that standard operating procedure, for example, what kind of questions... Does the control room ask if I make a call now that I am a so and so clinic and we need an ambulance to convey you to a referral center? What kind of questions do you ask? If you are in the hospital, hmm. then you don't call. In the hospital, who made the call? Okay. Because they are taking care of you and they know your condition very well and they have done all the assessment. So when they call, hmm. then we respond. But I must say, mm. and this is very, very instructive, okay. that for us, our main mandate is to move to the scene of an accident or an emergency. We suspect the people call it pre hospital. Mm. Then we, we suspect the patient and do whatever. Then we send them to the nearest health facility that can take care of the patient. Now, what you are describing where a hospital wanted mm. to take the patient to another hospital, it's called to inter-hospital transfer. Right. And that one can create challenges because assuming the hospital wants you to take the patient to maybe Tamale, you can imagine the fuel you use, the distance, the wear and tear, or the ambulance and all that. Well, you have to do that. And it is necessary. And we, we need some help. We already discussed that. Doc, uh, sorry, doc, doc, sorry, Doc, but you're not answering my question. You're describing for me another situation. Oh, really? I'm, I'm asking okay, you, so, I'm, I'm asking so you, I if I call... Have you asked it, of the standard it, operating procedure? Right. So I'm giving you all the... I, I got that, the, but the, I, I got the standard operating procedure. I'm asking that what mm -hmm. kind of questions are asked when oh, the call centers... Oh, what kind of questions come? are asked? Mm. I told you that we, that we, we if it's a hospital... We ask the hospital, what sort of diagnosis is it? Right. What problem? Why are they taking the patient? Have they right. arranged with the receiving hospital? And they've agreed so that we don't go and get stranded and all that. So these are the questions we ask. Do, do you, for example, ask if the patient has a bed at the receiving hospital? Do you ask that too? I just told you that we, we ask that. I just told you. Why is it necessary to ask that question? Oh, that is natural. Because if the patient goes, it has to be admitted. You need a bed. But is there no place within your procedure, for example, that you have your channels of conversation between hospital A and B where that communication can happen as opposed to, um, you know, keeping somebody in an ambulance or roaming around for it? Because that's the kind of understanding we got when the ambulance service was no, being launched. My, 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 my brother, it's mm. so simple. I mean, you are in hospital. You have a patient who has certain conditions. Mm. You have done all your assessment. You think the patient to be referred to hospital B. And you want us to come in. You have to arrange with the hospital. Tell them everything. They should know the condition of the patient. They should, mm. tell, they should know the department the patient is going. They should know their best state. They should know everything. They should even prepare. Not that they even have to come and stand 
by the, the door prepared to receive the patient. Mm. So you do all these things, and then you give us the feedback that this has been done. And then we, we, we move the patient to the place. Mm. It's as simple as that. Doc, so uh, another understanding we got, <clears throat> maybe it could be wrong, is that the ambulances are connected to districts. Is that correct? Yes, we have them in the district. Great. Now, every district has hospitals or a set of hospitals. Uh, and yeah. that the understanding we got was that this was going to be run on a digitized platform. So, for example, this morning, if I go mm. to Ododododo and I make a call to uh, the control room, it should be able to tell me which hospitals have beds available. Because once you pick the person, you should know where you're taking the person to. If it's an accident on the road, for example. Is that the case or is it a totally different matter? Yeah. So, what you are describing is where we go to the scene. Mm. And then we meet maybe somebody have an accident. That one, we become the hospital, and then we have to communicate with the facility where we want to send the patient. Mm. So I there see. are two issues here. Okay. One is the hospital calls you mm. and wants you to take the patient to a particular hospital. And then the other one is when you go to the scene and there is let's say, an accident. They want to send the patient to a particular hospital. That way you have to call the hospital that we have these challenges, we have these patients, we have mm. these injuries, mm. blah, 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 blah. And that we want to bring the patient to you. So that's what we do. So mm. that's, that's not the problem. Sometimes what happens is that maybe as you send, as they have agreed that they have a bed, and you're in the process of sending the patient, and maybe there was traffic or something, by the time you get there, somebody else has gone there with uh, an injury. Mm. And they are giving that bed out. Then you get stranded. Are, are you so suggesting... Doc, I see. Doc, are you suggesting to me, for example, that while the, uh, the ambulance is in transit, for example, you explained to me that the lady who was being transferred from Fijai to Kolibu and who lost her life uh, at the Kipu Teaching Hospital, at some point, your guys in the ambulance gave you feedback that her situation was deteriorating. Are you suggesting then, to me that this back and forth conversation, situational report as you travel along the route doesn't come to you so that if you, if you are leaving Ridge Hospital to Kolibu and then there's traffic on the way, you're, you can't communicate to Kolibu that you have a bit of traffic, so save the bed, I'm still bringing the patient. Does so that that could be done. Why not? So, so, why, so, why, why, so why is that not why, done? That's why we go to uh, Cape Coast and the, the patient condition was deteriorating. We didn't continue to account. We went to Cape Coast City Hospital. That's exactly the point. Now, Doc, again, about the fuel, I'm, I'm, I want a bit of clarity. I know that the mm. ambulance services are supposed to be free. Is that correct? Free. Great. Now, if the ambulance service are supposed to be free, how then do you come in with a conversation of uh, the hospital or a clinic or a patient supporting with a bit of fuel? I, I'm trying to understand yeah. so where that comes very from. It's simple. Mm. It's very, very simple. So, it's supposed to be free. When we go to the scene, we start them out, we take mm. them to the hospital and everything is free. Now, when the hospital calls us, mm. and we want to take a patient to Tamale, mm. We want the patient to be sent to Tamale. And we have challenges with our fuel, but that's some distance. We tell the hospital, please, well, we think that we can help. But then the distance said that the fuel situation will be a challenge. Can you support? What are the hospitals have ambulances. Do doc, what difference? What, sorry, to those sorry, Doc, what difference does it make if, for example, perish the thought, somebody gets an accident at Labadi? And another mm -hmm. person is also being transferred from now defunct General Hospital. What difference does it make? Are they both not Ghanaians? Oh, you're you not getting me. I'm saying that it's all free. But where we have to go long distances and we have to tell with our full situation, we talk to the hospital. And if they agree, then there's no issue. If, they, agree, it, they can if, the, if the hospital does not agree or if the patient cannot fund this... The residual fuel you're it. talking about, what, what happens? If the patient cannot agree, then what you do is you send the patient to the nearest facility that could take care and that your fuel can support you to that place. Even if that facility... They want the patient to go to a particular place, mm. which is very far. Mm. That's why we have these challenges. But, but, but Doc, you also do know, sorry about that, but you also do know that 
the, the referral hospitals are in, are in stages and, and, and in categories. So, for example, you can't take me from a small clinic to another clinic because that is what your fuel can support. Once you pick me from a clinic, you know you're taking me to a polyclinic, you're taking me to a regional hospital, and that sort of thing. So this yeah, argument... So, so it's very simple. Mm. Um, maybe you are not aware, but uh, I'm a trauma um, surgeon as well. Okay. And I, I train in Hamburg, Germany. Right. right. And uh, I've, I had the training in also in Haifa, uh, Rambam, which is a, the, one of the highest hospitals in Israel. Mm. And I can tell you that, yes, I understand the classes and the categories. Now, when you send a patient to, because you can't go very far, mm. to a nearby facility, the idea is to resuscitate the patient, keep the patient alive. Why arrangements are made to send the patient to a higher center? Because if you don't do that and just start moving, you might, you might lose the patient on, your, on the way. So sending a patient to a nearby facility, it's very useful. So then they can keep resuscitating the patient, keep monitoring the patient, keep the patient. But arrangements are made to take the patient to a higher center. So that is what is done. Doc, no. So you don't go and dump the patient somewhere and mm. say, no. Arrangements are made to, even if they have to airlift the patient, you know. Because it's not all the time that you have to run patient through. You don't keep close, uh, talk about to keep close. You mm. see the ramps. Right. You see the ramps. So if transporting the patient by road, the ramps could create a problem. You might have to airlift the patient. Doc, you how, how, that until you doc, get the uh, aircraft. Doc, you just, we, we'll come to, we'll uh, come to aircraft. Something. So you have to understand. Mm. We, we, have to, we, we have to wrap up. But Doc, I want to understand you. Where do you yes. get your fuel from for your ambulances? We get our fuel from um, National through coupons. So it is the taxpayer's money that funds the fuel, correct? Yes, please. Now, if the taxpayer is at a clinic and needs an ambulance and yes, he cannot please. afford the extra fuel, what happens to that taxpayer? When the taxpayer is in the hospital and he will, he will need the ambulance, and the ambulance has to go very, very far, we negotiate with the hospital to help us. And most of the time they do. And we don't have any issue with that. I see. And that is now, everywhere. Now, in this particular situation, the hospital agreed, but the back was passed on to the deceased husband. Question yes. is, you agreed with the hospital. They are passing on the cost to the man who could not fund it at the time because the, the delay, as you have ad admitted, might have caused the death of this individual. Did you act yeah, right? So the, the hospital agreed mm. and... We know that the hospital is going to take care of that. So why should they then pass it on to the patient at that critical stage? So that is the issue. Would you say that? Would you say this is a? Would you say this is a systemic failure? That, to just do that. Mm. Would, would you say they decide to do something mm. else? Mm. It's not our fault. Would you say this is a systemic failure? I think that the challenge and the failure was because this patient was not sent to the regional referral. Doc, doc I, I want a direct answer. I want a direct answer on this question. Would you say that giving all the explanations and the questions I'm asking and the narrative, this is a systemic failure, would you say? I would say it's a systemic failure. Because if you talk about systemic failure, then you are talking about all the systems. But this is a particular decision somebody took. And unfortunately, that decision didn't help the system. Your staff, two of them, or maybe three, uh, you had the man. He said they actually were ridiculing him. They, uh, they, the moment the lady died, they said, well, they could extrapolate little numbers from that time code and go and stick it. How do you take that and what have you done to your staff who misconducted themselves according to the, the, um, the bereaved man? Yes, yeah, so when we met him, he actually said that and of course that's an allegation so we contacted the emts and it's like they were like they didn't say anything like that so um it is his word against their word so we have to find a way to 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 find out whether this is true or not
So but in we are very worried mm. if it is true, it's, it will be very, very, very bad. I mean, you don't, you don't ever do this. So Never. what hap what happens to them now? The, the minority in Parliament is asking for you to interdict them. Would you bow to that? Oh no, 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 not at all. I mm. mean, uh, we have established. Uh, what I'm aware of that they are calling for a proof. So right. the proof should come on, and then. Of course, after the proof comes on, and then there's a the report. Whoever is found culpable, of course, I will have to see the results of the law. So, My, uh, for now, mm. um, we are waiting for the proof, and then uh, we'll see the outcome. Dr. Siamen, my final question to you is this. How do we solve the problem of uh, supporters with fuel, hospital passes on the back, you are the coordinator for the Western and Western North regions for ambulance service. How do we stop this so that somebody doesn't lose his life or her life or the wife or the husband or the child because they couldn't afford fuel for an ambulance? How do we stop it? Uh, I think we can solve this problem when we keep strictly to the national uh, referral policy guideline and then ensure that we don't go long distances. And doctors must do very good assessment so they know that when patients are critical, we don't take them too far. Um, we should stick to the policy. And you can, you can Google the policy and you see what is there. You see that there's a lot of information to help us. Mm. And I think if we keep to this policy guideline, uh, we won't run into any difficulty. Thank you. Dr. Terry Asiyama, he is the Western and Western North coordinator. Uh, for the ambulance yes. services, and, and you heard yeah, it first here so on TV. Cheers, Doc.